We are back in Las Vegas. Gorgeous place where the famous come to have fun. And we are having a blast at the 40th reunion of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. The gold medal winning team that if you ask members of the team, you'll get an answer consistently. Who was the most valuable player? The guy sitting with us right now. Jim Craig, the netminder. 36 saves on 39 shots against the Soviet Union. A lot of Americans remember that vividly. What do you remember best about that game? Um, it, was, it was a great challenge for us. But, you know, obviously when you're a goalie, you, you try to make sure your team stays in games. And um, the strategy behind that game for me was a lot different. You know, I tried to figure out, you know, I, I always say playing one period against the Russians is like playing a whole game against someone else. And so I would redress after every period. And then I really tried to focus on, you know, what part of the games are the most important? And it was always the first five minutes of the period and the last five. And so all of a sudden, when you start setting goals and you uh, really pay attention to them, it becomes important. And, and so it was really a, a great opportunity for us, and we uh, executed. As just kind of a side note, Jim, we were chatting before we started today, and you were saying recently, Dale Arnold, yourself, you did a deep dive on the analytics, which didn't exist back then in hockey. What yeah. did they tell you from that game? Well, Dale told me I didn't do it. He said that they basically said uh, that, you know, my play was the reason why they won, which is I, I'm not saying that that's what the analytics said. So, uh, you know, basically we won because we have a great team and everybody played their game. And um, um, that's why we won. All right. So I have to ask one more tone. Who was your MVP? Because we have asked a number of the players and they've all said it to, to a man, you. But for you, who was the MVP of that team without picking yourself? Well, you know, Herb was an incredible strategist, right. you know, and what he was able to do with Robbie to make sure that he fired our team up and the strategy that he used on Robbie, he couldn't have done with anybody else, but maybe a couple other guys in the team. And, you know, we lose our first game against Sweden and we're done. And so, um, you know, Herb and Craig Patrick, they don't get the credit for what our team did. Players are supposed to do those things. But when you go back and you analyze and you look at how the Russian coach pulled his goalie, you know, um, I, I didn't play very well against West Germany at the, at the start of the game after Mike hit me in warm-ups, and um, he could have pulled me, but he didn't. Uh, Herb Brooks pulls me to uh, put an extra attacker on. Baker scores the, you know, the biggest goal. So when you look at our team's win, you, you think of the preparation our coaches did to get us there. Uh, I like to tell people in, uh, that Herb drove change. The old way didn't work, and he figured out a way that did. But, you know, you have Billy Baker, it's a huge goal. Robbie McClanahan's play. Mark Johnson's goal, the seconds left. Um, so, so many players. You know, Kenny Morrow. Everybody did such a great job. Jim was so marvelous, and yet I've heard you say that what your hockey team did paled in comparison to what Eric Hyden did. Right. How in the world can you say that, even to those of us who can't get over what Hyden did, winning the sprint all the way to the 10,000, five gold medals, unprecedented, how? Well, you know, Eric Hyden represents what every great athlete should be, and it's, that's a humble, hardworking guy. And once he accomplished all those things, he reinvented himself. So personally for me, Eric Hyden is a... You know, a, a superhuman guy. And I, I wanted to pay tribute to Eric, and we did it in so social media because people forget because what our team accomplished. We were such an underdog. But to be able to be a favorite, which Eric was, but to win five gold medals. And, and if you go outside and understand that the conditions that he did were outside, they weren't inside. It's not like a dome. It was, it's, it was incredible. So, I just, uh, I really respect great athletes, and so I, I have a great re a deal of respect for Eric and what he was able to accomplish. Jim, you're very thoughtful, obviously, in the way you look at things. Is there any one story maybe that we haven't heard that hasn't been told a number of times that resonates with you? Yeah. Craig Patrick um, had a great story. Uh, my son hadn't been... You know, it was with us in Colorado Springs, and I, I, he had met Craig. And I said, Craig, can you tell J.D., my son, um, a story that nobody knows? And he said, sure. He, so we're playing against Finland in the gold medal game. We're losing after two periods. And as we're coming off the ice, we're losing 2-1, to one and we're getting booed. And not many people remember that, you know, all of a sudden you go from a favorite, I mean, from an underdog to a favorite. So I said, Craig, you know, any, any story that you have for me? He goes, yeah. He said, um, 
Herb said, you know, they're not listening to me. I want you to go in there, and I want you to get them ready. And so uh, Craig walks into the locker room, and he all of a sudden he sees guys like O'Callaghan, everybody yelling, get out of here, Craig. You know, get out of the locker room. You know, they're doing all this thing. So Craig really says kind of nothing, and Herb goes to him afterward. He walks out and goes, well, how how do you do? How is it? How is it? He goes, we're going to win. Nice. <laughs> so that was a, and they did. Yeah, it was a fun story for Craig. And after that, obviously one of the most memorable moments in cinematic history, Field of Dreams, Dad, want to have a catch. Before that, it was you looking up into the stands, where's my father? That moment and what it meant to other people, I'm sure you hear tons of stories about how emotional that was. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. It's, um, in my line of work now where I do motivational sp speaking and sales training, what I try to really help people understand is the only real personal sacrifice that's made is when somebody else gives you an opportunity. And, you know, for myself, it was the community. And, Brian, you're at Rhode Island. You know what it was like sure. there. I mean, if people saw where you played with the, you know, the mesh that around it, the, right. you know, the, but it was tradition, right? And, and so here I have a community. I have family. I have coaches. Everybody who's gave me an opportunity to be in this position, but nobody more than my mother and my father. And so I think out of respect, it was the right thing to do. It was something I'm proud of. But how it was resonated with so many people is, you know, when I saw my dad, I always gave him a hug and a kiss. It didn't matter who was in front. And I, I don't think people felt that comfortable. Not so, no. And so, you know, now it, all of a sudden you get letters how all of a sudden the father got a better relationship going with his son or the wow. son had a better relationship with the father. And so that part makes me really happy. But more than anything, um, you know, have, my mother had just passed away. My, my father held it together in the Olympics and our win really gave him a, a, another boost in his life. So it was really special. I'm having trouble holding it together myself. So we'll wrap it up with that. Jim Craig, as great as you were in net. I understand why you're a motivational speaker now. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be with the NHL, guys. Thanks. Wow.